funding that we've received under the uh, National Partnerships uh, Project has enabled us to provide each of our campuses with the flexible capacity to support learning teams that focus on very specific reforms that we're working towards. Uh, the key one will be uh, the focus on literacy and numeracy and uh, what we've been able to do is allocate a staffing provision to each of our campuses which then allows staff to meet together to focus on the development of alignment of practice, um, alignment of what high quality teaching and learning practice is in a low social socioeconomic uh, context, but then also for that, those teams to take the, that uh, learning back to their schools and build their capacity as educational and instructional leaders with the teams in their, their campuses. What the um, National Partnerships has been able to um, encourage us to do, and in fact almost um, there is no other way, than to see the absolute interrelated nature between each of our individual schools. And there's a real sense of moral purpose that's been developed over the two years that we've been working that has been a change in, in our thinking around how we are connected to each other. One of the greatest challenges we've had is to get our school community reinvigorated in, in valuing learning again and participating in learning again. I think it's probably fair to say that if you looked at our data prior to the National Partnership Initiative, we had some concerns in relation to quite possibly every second child in the school not making national minimum standard around literacy and numeracy. So we stopped doing some stuff that just didn't make a difference. Um, and we went back to stuff like literacy, numeracy and social skills. And we actually have whole school approaches across the Federation of Schools, of which this school is one example, where we have locked down learning time, literacy blocks, numeracy blocks, and we explicitly teach social skills as well. So within our dedicated literacy and numeracy time, there are some processes or there are some structures that are common across our school. One of those processes is a whole small a whole approach to learning where at the beginning of the lesson, children are grouped together with um, a teacher to talk about the learning outcomes, the, the purpose of the lesson that, they, the, that they're going to engage in. Um, there is some common questioning about some common overarching experiences that children will have. And then um, as a result of that, they break into smaller, more intense focused groups. Uh, we wave the children into groups according to their ability of what we're doing in that particular area. And this is done through the whole school. And each group is targeted with a teacher so that they can deliver the required content for the children. One of our strengths at the moment is every person who is involved within the literacy lockdown time or within the uh, literacy learning time is very clear as to what the learning outcomes are that, we're, uh, that the students are trying to achieve. Our teachers have had to become learners again and that has really resulted in um, us building a learning community within our staff, uh, our learning community within our children and the most significant results have been around the children's learning outcomes. We've shifted from every second child struggling with literacy and numeracy to 97% of our children above the national minimum standard. I have been here, this is my seventh year and we have been using this style for the last four years and I wish I had had this when I began my teaching because it is just so effective and has so much impact on children and their interest, it holds their interest. I like reading because I get to get interested in stories and sometimes I just can't get away from them. We've had cause for great celebration uh, recently with some fantastic uh, data that's indicating that the changes we've made to delivering our, our teaching, explicit teaching of oral language, for example, is reaping great rewards for us. 
we're also very conscious and we're trying to be strategic around building a model that is going to be sustainable for our school communities. Once the funding from the National Partnership ceases, we are certain and really conscious of making sure that what is left is something that will work for kids in low SES schools way beyond the funding of the National Partnership. We have a, a, an outstanding example here of how a group of principals can find their moral purpose and work collaboratively together um, and put aside competition so that they can look at how they can work together to solve problems and issues around children's learning, not just in their own school, but in a whole group of schools. That's probably the most um, advice I'd give. Look to your colleagues and work together.